Hey guys, here we are in my bedroom. Now you see behind me, I have the closet built-ins I made a while back. They feature a nightstand on the side, some drawers, and some uprights to hide all my wife's nice dresses. Now, full disclosure, we are moving houses. We've sold this house and I cannot bring these with me. Now in the meantime, I did find a nice ad on Kijiji for some free, kind of similar to these built-ins headboard wall unit thingy. Basically the goal is to kind of recreate this as much as I can as a temporary solution so let's go into the garage and check that out and I'm gonna show you what I want to accomplish. So this is what I got for free from those nice gentlemen down the street. They gave me these two upright pieces, this one and this one. You see it's got a cupboard on top of some shelves, some drawers down below. That's really nice stuff. Now as shown in the photo here, it has this section right here which is kind of like behind the bed is like a headboard or whatever. And it had these panels right here, which slid back and forward to either cover this section or the middle section. Now, I don't think I really want to use this in any way, as well as this piece right here with the lights overhead connecting the units. I think what I wanna do is take these upright units and push them out just a little bit, chop this here, chop the opposite side there, and then these will be our little nightstands. This will be the top of our nightstand, and I'll be able to turn this into a little door. So I went upstairs, measured the bed height. It's 28 inches, so I've marked it right here. We're just gonna use the speed square in combination with my circular saw to make this first cut. Then we're gonna spin the piece, cut all the other sides. Now this raised piece down here, I think I'm gonna have to use the jigsaw or recip saw or something. I will figure it out. Okay, so I've come up with a game plan on what we're gonna do here. Now, this old sliding door, you see it's a little bit thicker on this side, that's because it used to tuck back here. Now, there's another groove right here which had a plastic piece which slid in this groove and that's how the whole mechanism worked. Now, what I wanna do is kind of put the door right here so it's gonna open here and it's gonna hinge from over here. We'll use these hinges, slide this piece in right here, it'll attach to the back of this trim, and then the front screws to this right here. And because of that, this is gonna be a little bit too long, so we're gonna to have to trim off the section which would normally be hidden back behind this trim. Now, as for the rest of this, we're gonna be reinstalling the trim on this side just to kind of frame out the door, and we're gonna put some trim around the top as well. So I've got my combination square here set with the thickness of this top piece, as well as an eighth inch of extra spacing for a little bit of wiggle room to open and close the door. Now with that resting on top, I'll mock my door in place and butt it up against there. And now I can see where I'm gonna want to mount these hinges. So I'll just make a mark on the side, mount my hinges to the back side of this trim, and then we'll mount the door to these hinges after that's done. Okay, so because of this bottom shelf here and the thickness of the bracket, I had to chisel out a little bit down here, but we should be good now. I've got my combination square back up here. The hinges are open. Touch against the top and close this guy. So to round off the top of these end tables, I have this upper piece which used to have the lights shining down and we've got it flipped upside down obviously to be our nice top. Now we have kind of a weird angle on the front and to make the angles work along this side and this side, I'm just going to use a straight edge between these two pieces, draw a line underneath and we'll just cut that with a circular saw, no fussing around with weird angles and stuff. Same thing over here. Now you guys might be wondering what are you going to do about trim on this side, are you going to miter this or anything? No, I'm just gonna leave the end cut like that. And basically this is just gonna dead end into the mattress of the bed. So I'm not really gonna worry about it anyways. I think it'll look just fine. This little triangular piece hanging over the end, I think that's just 
extra storage on the tabletop. Whatever, it was free. So for the bottom here, so we don't have this giant void right here, I'm just gonna fill it in with another piece right here. And I've measured from here to here, and this is a 20 degree angle. So we'll set that on the table saw and we'll just cut to length a little piece. And then we'll just hold it in place with some brad nails. Okay, I've struggled to get this up here all by myself. I highly recommend having someone help you because goddamn, that was heavy. But anyways, we're now gonna take this piece and marry it to the side down here. I'm just gonna use my straight edge slash level to make sure everything's aligned. And then we're just gonna drill everything in from the inside of the drawer area with some two inch screws. I'll just make sure everything won't move on me with a few me nails and uh, then we'll get to drilling. Seems very well attached. The last thing to do is attach the tabletop, which is gonna go right like this, pressed up against the front. It's gonna dead end here. We're gonna open it up and I'm gonna attach it with a few inch and a quarter pocket screws from the underside so you won't see any holes. So I've got my putty knife, some drywall compound, and some holes that need filling. We've got some old drawer pull holes on the front of these drawers, as well as some old mounting holes from when it had the other configuration. So we'll just fill that, wait for it to dry, sand it flush, and then we're ready for paint. So in just a moment, I'm gonna bring you inside my murder room, I mean paint booth, where I have both units set up and I've taped off the hinges. The doors and drawers are still in place as I don't want to paint any of the insides, just the exterior. So I am using my HVLP Wagner spray gun. It requires no thinning of the paint. Super easy, should be done in one coat. Let's get to it. So I did have to spray it twice. What happened was I put it on way too thick originally. I had to come back and brush out a bunch of drips. That left some brush marks. So then I lightly sprayed it one more time and now it's pretty much perfect. Last thing to do is put on the handles and all that and uh, we'll reinstall the tabletop piece on the side which did not get painted and the sucker is ready for its new home. And here we are in the new house and this is the finished result. I think it looks pretty nice for a temporary solution. Everything's temporary until it isn't. But anyways, yeah, hopefully this gives you some inspiration for that trash pick treasure that you can turn into a nice piece of gold. We'll see you on the next one. <laughs>